Hey everyone, Steve from Back at Your Gallery here, and this time around, I'm coming to you from my office, and I have something a little bit different to talk about. First, I gotta give you a little bit of background before we jump in. So we're gonna talk about sharpening and denoising, and basically how to make high ISO shots like 6400, 12800, look like they were shot at ISO 400. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. Now, here's the thing though. This video was originally four different videos that were part of a larger series I was sort of working on for a post-processing video workshop I was gonna sell on my website. However, soon after getting into this, I realized that the project was gonna be about 100 hours long and I don't think anyone wants to watch me talk for 100 hours. But rather than just scrapping this, I wanted to put these four videos together and do something here and give it to you guys here on YouTube because I think the information here is very valuable and I think it covers a very common problem. A lot of times as wildlife photographers, we're stuck with higher ISOs. This video is gonna show you how to get the most out of that situation. And we're gonna do everything right with Lightroom. You're not gonna to have to go to Photoshop. You're not gonna need any third parties. In fact, I would say the techniques you're gonna learn in this video will make you forget those third party solutions. I've used pretty much all of them and the techniques that I'm gonna show you in this video are hands down, going to give you better results. It's going to look cleaner. You're not going to have as many artifacts or any artifacts. It just works better. So hopefully you'll stick through the entire video because it's very important you watch the whole thing. I realize it's kind of long, but we're going to start off. We're going to talk about the importance of sharpening, the importance of having a sharp image, how to tell if an image is sharp enough for this workflow procedure you're about to see. We're going to talk about keeping sharpness out of the areas where you don't want it and keeping it where you do want it so that when it comes time to denoise, that works better. We're then gonna go on to how the denoise tool itself works. We're gonna go the, over the ins and outs of that. Then we're gonna do kind of a standard denoising with a moderately high ISO shot, like I think around 2,500 or so. And then we're gonna go into the advanced stuff towards the end of the video where we're going to take a 12,800 ISO image. And I'm gonna show you how to use multiple levels of denoise with that image so you can keep the maximum amount of detail and have the maximum amount of denoising all at the same time. Now this is a technique I've not seen anyone else do, and I'm not saying that I'm the only one that does it. I'm sure other people do, I just haven't seen it. Maybe I don't get out much, but I think you're gonna find it very, very useful. So with all of that in mind, let's jump in. And again, if you hear me talking about the next video or whatever, keep in mind, this was supposed to be a video series. So some of it, you know, if there's some continuity weird stuff in there, that's why hopefully you can ignore that. And I hope you enjoy the video. And again, I hope you'll stick through the whole thing because that stuff at the end there, just great. I think you're really gonna like it, enjoy. The next step in our workflow is to denoise the photo and balance that with a little sharpening as needed. So that's what we're going to discuss in this part of the series. However, before we begin, I want to talk about a few tips that will increase your odds of a successful denoising. First, you got to start with a sharp image and we'll look at that in the first video. We'll talk about just how much detail you need in order to get good results with both sharpening and noise reduction. And we'll also talk about how to decide if an image makes the cut or not. Second, you'll want to fill the frame as much as possible, especially with those higher ISO shots. Noise reduction software works best when the detail is large and obvious. When you have a small subject in the frame, the detail is physically smaller on the sensor and more easily overwhelmed by noise. This makes it much more difficult for noise reduction software of any kind to recover any meaningful detail in the subject. Finally, we typically want to denoise early in the process for best results. Although technically you can denoise at any point in the workflow, I've done some tests that seem to indicate that it's better to do it before you actually do too much in the way of post-processing. Take these photos for example. This is the same image and I processed it the same way. The only difference is that with the photo on the right, denoise was added at the end of the workflow and for the one on the left, it was added at the beginning. Although they are very close, you'll notice the one where noise reduction was done last exhibits some artifacts in the feathers and the other is nice and clean. Also, take a look at the background. You can see the one on the right exhibits more noise than the one on the left. Granted, these issues don't always crop up when you denoise later in the process. However, since it is possible, I recommend running denoise first or at least very early in your post-processing workflow. Finally, how noisy should an image be before you run denoise on it? Personally, I usually use it anytime my ISO is over like 400 or 800. Granted, those kinds of shots usually only require just a very small nudge of the denoise slider, but it does help a little bit and I'll take every advantage I can get. Let's head to my office and I'll show you how it all works.
So in this video, let's take a look at what sharp actually is, what sharp enough actually is, if you want to do sharpening and denoise. Because in order to get the most from either one of those, you really have to start off with a sharp, or at least think of it as an in-focus picture. Because in a lot of cases, people think sharpening, well, isn't that to you know, sharpen a soft photo? It's not. What sharpening actually does is sharpening takes the areas that are supposed to be sharp that were in focus when you snap the photo, and it makes those look crisper and more sharp to the viewer. It does not take stuff that's out of focus and bring it into focus. And the same is going to kind of go with denoising. When you denoise a photo, it's going to soften that photo. So the best results are always going to come from photos that already have good detail in them. So the key here is to be able to recognize photos that are good candidates for both sharpening and especially for denoising. And that's what we're going to look at here. I'm going to show you what I feel like is sharp enough to perform those operations with a good deal of success. Now, I also realize there's third party apps out there that claim to be able to take an out of focus picture and make it look sharp again. And I've played with those to be 100% honest. I'm not a big fan. Only maybe one or two times have I actually been able to get an image that was just a very slight miss and bring it back and make it look like it was something usable. For the most part, I've not been happy with those results. Now that brings me to one last point before we start looking at the images, and that is that we all have different standards for what's good enough. In some cases, you might look at one of these examples that I'm showing you that's out of focus and say, well, that seems good enough for me for what I would use it for, and I get that, and we all have different standards, we all have different reasons for using the photo and the absolute quality, the absolute sharpness is going to come down to the individual for what you're using it for. Sometimes you just want a nice memory and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to show you what I consider to be sharp enough. So let's take a look. So let's start with a very obvious one here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this guy here and you can see at 200% here, he is definitely not very sharp at all. Now let's take a look at a comparison though and see what sharp should look like. And that is this guy right here. And if you notice, there's a big difference here. In fact, let's go to comparison view here and kind of look at these eyes side by side. We're also looking at this at 200%, as you can see up here. And as a side note, I find that with higher res monitors, this is a 5K Mac monitor that I'm using right now. I find with higher resolution monitors, you really need to go into about 200% because the pixels are so small. When you're looking at things at 100%, it almost is kind of like looking at 50% on a normal monitor. And in fact, I have a 1920 by 1080 monitor next to me. And when I look at 100% on that monitor and then look at 200% on the 5K monitor, I'm getting the same level of zoom. I'm getting the same level of detail. So just a little side note there for you. But anyhow, let's take a quick look at this. And as you can see, we have some nice sharpness in here. We can see the bumps on the skin really well and over here that's just gone so this is the difference between what i would say is a sharp enough image and one that's not going to cut it now let's see what happens with this image when we try to sharpen it so let's go back to this guy here and this is the out of focus one and let's go to the develop module and let's go over to sharpening and let's just try to push some sharpening into it and watch what happens to this area and i'm going to go all the way down and I'm going to start pushing this up. And if you notice, what's happening is we're not really doing much sharpening here at all, are we? It's getting crisper, but what's happening is we are getting some sharpening along these harder, more obvious, these larger edges, but we're not getting any sharpening in the details. And as we push it into higher and higher values, basically all we're doing is increasing the noise in this photo. We're not really making this any sharper, we're just seeing more and more noise. And that is a key indicator that you missed the focus on a particular shot. If you're trying to sharpen and you notice that it's just getting noisier and you're not seeing more detail come up, that's a key that you have missed focus and you should probably use a different shot. Now let's reset that and let's go over to the sharp one and try the same trick. So I'm going to bring this all the way down and watch as I push sharpening into this. Watch what happens to the detail. We see more and more detail as it gets sharper and sharper. Instead of just getting noisier, which it's doing a little bit of, we're seeing some noise here, but instead of just getting noisier, if you notice, we see much more texture, much more detail. Sharpening is actually doing what it's supposed to do. We're seeing this get sharper and sharper as we go up and down the slider. It's not just getting noisier. It's getting a little bit noisier, but we're seeing a lot more sharpness in there. So that's another way you can tell if an image is sharp or not. So let's take a look at another example here real quick. 
And this one is another one that didn't quite make it. Now this isn't quite as out of focus as the other one. And this one's a little bit tempting because you can see it, still see some detail here. So you can still see some little wisps of feathers and that near the eye, but focus was actually more, a little bit more in front here. That's why those are sharp. But if you look here, you don't see a lot of detail. Now, if we look at a sharp version of this image, we can see we do see detail in here. We do see these little individuals starting to stand out a little bit more here. Now, if we go in here and say, well, what about sharpening that? Well, let's bring it all the way down and let's start pushing it up. And as we push it up, we're not getting any more detail. If you notice, we're not pulling out more little individual feathers here as I'm pushing this into sharper and sharper territory. All I'm doing is making the image noisier. I'm not actually picking up any more detail. So again, to me, this is a sign that this image is too soft to use. Now let's do that same test with this guy here. And once again, we'll go all the way down. And as I start pushing sharpness into it, watch what happens. Now we're starting to see individual feathers sort of stand out along, right, along this area right here, along his orbital ring. We're also starting to see a little bit more texture in the skin and the, and the bumps right here. And again, as we push more sharpening into it, we get a little bit more detail still. And that's a sign that this is probably a sharp enough photo. But for right now, let's take a look at what happens when we have an out of focus one and we use denoise on it. And in this case, I already have sharpness cranked way up, but as you can see, we're not really gaining any detail here. And it actually, I think, looks worse than it did before. Here's the original version of that image before denoise, and then here it is after. And yeah, it's less noisy, but I think it actually looks worse. And we can push some sharpening into it, but again, it's not really doing anything. I can go all the way to 150, and again, we're gonna get some sharpening along these harder, larger edges. That's not unusual, but we're really not pulling out enough detail here, in my opinion. Now, if we go back to, let's put this at about 75 or so. Let's take a look at the sharp one after denoise. And again, here's zero. And we're, let's go, let's do the same thing, put this one up to 75, because we always have to add a little bit of sharpening after we do our denoise. But look at the detail and texture and everything that we retained in the sharp image. Once again, I want to emphasize that sharp images make all the difference in the world, not just for sharpening, but also for denoise. So let's compare those two side by side here. And as you can see, it's a world of difference. I mean, which one of these would you rather have? It's, a, it's an easy decision. This is nice and sharp. It looks really good. Over here, this is just a blurry mess. So that's what you're looking for when it comes to sharpness. You want to make sure when you're pushing that sharpening slider that you're actually seeing the image get sharper and not just noisier. Okay, at this point, we know our image is sharp enough to take sharpening really well. And if it's that sharp, it should be fine with denoise. But the question is, how do we actually sharpen and denoise our image or denoise and sharpen our image, right? So if we go over to the detail panel right here, and if this is closed, just click this little arrow and it'll open up. If we go to this detail panel, we have all of this stuff over here. So should we use sharpening first? Should we do denoise first? What about this stuff down here? Let's talk. So the first piece of advice I'm gonna give you is a maybe a little counterintuitive to what you've heard in the past. If you've used a third-party denoise plugin, the recommendation has always been take sharpening all the way out, drop it to zero, and don't add any sharpening to the image, right, before you denoise it. Well, Lightroom doesn't really care what you do with sharpening here, so I leave it set at these defaults. At, in this case, it's 40 for this particular image. Then I have the radius and the detail just set to Lightroom's just basic defaults. It's fine. And the reason for this is actually kind of simple. Basically, what Lightroom does is it applies sharpening on top of our RAW file or DNG. Now, when we do our denoise, it's going to create a new file called a DNG that's basically an Adobe RAW file. It has all of our information and all of our settings and stuff come over with that. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. But basically, you can think of it like this. You're going to have your DNG file on the bottom, and then anything we do in the sharpening panel will be applied on top of that DNG file. So it doesn't matter if we start off at 150 or at zero or in the middle someplace, and I've played with this, I've tested it, I've tried different variations with different photos, and when I can do three different tests, one at zero, one at 50, and one at, say, 150, and I can play with those final DNGs and adjust the sliders, the sharpening sliders, so they're all the same, and all the images look identical, there's absolutely no difference. So you don't really need to worry about having sharpening turned off for this. And I don't recommend that you do because it is a little bit easier to evaluate with it turned on. However, there is another control here we are going to adjust and that is masking. 
What masking does is it allows us to tell Lightroom to only sharpen the areas that are supposed to be sharp in the image. So in this case, it's gonna be this monkey's face and his eyes and all this area in through here. We want that to be sharpened. What we don't want sharp is this area here. We don't wanna sharpen noise because sharp noise is harder for denoise to work with. Now again, I do realize I just said that the sharpening stuff here doesn't matter. However, where it does matter is when we are running denoise and we're making decisions as far as how much denoise to add. And in order to do that, we do need to have masking in there accurately so that we can see kind of what our background looks like. Because most of the time, the default sharpening is going to work fine for us. We're not going to have to add too much more even after denoising. So it helps to put in masking first so we don't end up using more denoise than necessary to clean up the background. Because a sharp background, when the noise is that sharp, is going to take more denoise than it is when it's a little bit knocked down. So let's take a look at how masking works here. I'm going to just push this all the way over to give you a dramatic effect. And if you look at the eye area, it's softer here, and the noise here has definitely had the edge taken off of it. Let's do that again. I'm gonna go all the way down to zero, and you can see how sharp that noise is and how sharp his eye is. And if I push it all the way over, we definitely knock the edge off of the noise, but we also have so softened his eye a little bit, and we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring masking back here, and then we're just gonna start pushing it over until we see that eye get just a little bit soft, which starts right about in the 60s and 70s here, it looks like. So right around 50, 55, low 50s here, it looks really good. And what I really want you to look at here though is the noise. Look at the noise over here. And if I double click this to send it back to zero, to default, look how much sharper it gets. Then I'll click it again, bring it up to the lower 50s, and it knocks the edge off, double click it, it's sharp again. So that makes a big difference and it's gonna have an impact on how we use our denoise tool. Now, there is another tool inside of Lightroom to kind of help you with this because sometimes just looking at it is a little bit tricky. It doesn't really make it too easy, depending on the image. So Lightroom says, hey, guess what? Press the Alt or Option button, depending on if you're using a Windows or Mac, and then click this handle. And when you click that handle, the image will turn into a black and white version of itself. This is basically showing you what's called a mask. Now, the way masks work is white reveals and black conceals. So anything that you see in this image that's white is going to see the sharpening effects that we have input right now. And anything that's black is not going to see them. And anything that's kind of in the middle there is going to see some of it, but not all of it. So this is another good way to kind of evaluate our image. And we can go back and forth. For example, if I go all the way to zero, it's just a white screen. Why? Because everything in the image is white because it's getting the full effect of sharpening. If I go to 100, only very, very small parts of the image are white because almost nothing is getting the effect of sharpening. So what we want is we want our subject as white as we can get it, balanced against a background that's as black as we can get it. Now that doesn't mean you should always try to make the background black. Something like this I think is too far. What I'm looking at is I'm looking at the subject. I want a lot of white in my subject, especially in the areas that are supposed to be sharp. However, I'm also looking at the background, so I'm kind of balancing that. See, I don't mind the background looking a little bit like this. It's still knocking some of the edge off of that noise, and that's all we're trying to do here. So this is a really, really great tool, and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll start like this, and I'll try to get it kind of in the ballpark, and then I'll release my Alter Option key, and I'll come in, and I'll just note the number that I'm at. In this case, it's around 40, and I'll push it a little bit more and say, am I seeing any real difference in sharpness here in the areas that I'm interested in. In this case, I am because I pushed it a little too far. But you know, in the lower 50s here, it still looks pretty darn good. Now, if I go this way, not seeing any in real increase in sharpness there, not significant. So I'm going to put this right around 50 or so and call it good. But again, consider what it's doing to the background here. At 50, it's definitely knocked the edge off of that. At zero, we definitely have an edge to that and it's going to be harder to denoise. So to me, this is always a very critical first step, and you'll see why here as soon as we go to the denoise part. But before we do, I do wanna mention that it's very important to realize that the masking values that you're seeing here only apply to this individual photo. It doesn't apply to every single photo you'll put in there. Sometimes you'll have numbers that are similar to mine. Sometimes you're only gonna be able to use a little bit of masking, and sometimes you're gonna be able to use a lot of masking, and usually the more the merrier. However, just keep in mind that every photo is gonna be different, so you have to go through this process with each one. Now, let's actually denoise a photo. Okay, so it's finally time to denoise our image. So what do we do here, right? Let's go to the noise reduction panel here. And as you can see, we have a button for denoise. 
we have manual noise reduction. We have some options down here. So how do we proceed? What do we do? First thing you do is you click this little arrow right here and get rid of the manual noise reduction options. I have to tell you, since the denoise feature came to Lightroom, I have not used manual noise reduction at all in the last, I guess, eight to 10 months. Maybe it's almost a year now but I have not used the manual noise reduction once in Lightroom since it came here. It's just that much better. And that's what I recommend for you as well. So now we have our denoise option. And just to be thorough, you can also access this by right clicking the image and clicking enhance. That'll bring up the same dialog box or going to photo and clicking enhance from there. So there's a couple places you can get to it. I usually get to it from right here because I'm always going to do some masking before I dive into denoise. So, that's done here, so this is very convenient. So let's go ahead and press that denoise button, and that will bring up the Enhance Preview dialog box. And Enhance is something that Lightroom has. It has multiple things. It has denoise, raw details, and super resolution all under the same kind of umbrella here. So that's why you're going to see things like enhanced and not enhanced down here, even though denoise is what we're really working on right now. But anyhow, let's start over here in this preview box. Now, as you can see right now, we just have some fur, so I want to see the eye, so I'm going to drag over to it, and that's easy enough. Just hold the mouse button down and just drag around as you like. There's our eye. We have a nice zoomed-in view of it, and you probably noticed something while I did that. When my mouse button is down, we see the actual original file, and when I bring it up, we see the denoised version of the file, the enhanced version of the file, if you prefer. So if I hold that down, I can kind of do a before and after. Say, so here's after, here's before. Pretty cool. Now, let's say I need to go someplace else in the image. Moving around like this is kind of a pain because it has to reload each time and it takes forever. But we have this little magnifier right here in the corner. You give that a click and it will show you the whole image. And then you can just say, hey, I wanna go over here. Look at those little, think of that little plus as a crosshair and it'll go right in there. I can click this again and go right back to the eye I was working on. Pretty handy. Moving over to the right here. The first thing I wanna talk about is that this is going to make a new DNG. So basically it's going to take your raw file and it's going to turn it into a DNG raw file, which is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just an Adobe version of raw and you don't lose any information. People get a little freaked out sometimes with DNGs, but it has the same information as your original. And if you've made any changes to the raw file itself, those are going to be carried over to the DNG. So if you maybe brought up the exposure a little bit. It's going to carry that exposure adjustment over to that DNG file. So when you go to work on it, any of the adjustments you made there will still be there. So we have our denoise box checked, which is what we want. We have an amount slider. We're gonna swing back to this for in just a moment. But for right now, let's uncheck this. And when you do that, you see you have access to these other options here. So right now we have raw details checked. And raw details is a little bit confusing. People are like, what are, what's raw details, right? So I'm gonna read you directly from Adobe's site here. It says. Raw Details produces crisp detail and more accurate renditions of edges, improves color rendering, and reduces artifacts. So basically, it's a way to make your raw file just a little bit better. Now, you have to have raw details on if you're using denoise. I can come in here, I can uncheck it, but if I click denoise, it checks it again. It's going to force you to use that, which is okay because it does a really good job of bringing out a little bit extra detail. Since denoise tends to destroy detail, any kind of denoise is going to destroy detail. We want to make sure we preserve as much of it as possible and raw details helps in that regard. We also have another option for super resolution, which is just basically a way to add more pixels to your photo. So maybe you have a five megapixel photo and you wish it was, you know, I don't know, eight or 10 or whatever. You can use super resolution and it'll increase the size. I don't use it. I don't think it's super great or very effective, but you know, if it's right here, just in case you were curious about it. So let's go back to denoise, give that a check. Let's go to our slider. Now we have the amount and we can, press this back and forth. We can push this back and forth to adjust the amount of denoise that's being applied to our image. So if we go all the way down here to one, you can see it's still pretty noisy in that eyeball there. But if we press our mouse button down, you can see there's still a slight difference between enhanced and not enhanced. So even if you have this all the way at one, it's still going to do a little something to your image. So of course, most time you wouldn't be using it just to do a little something to your image. You want a little bit more than that. So we can drag this slider to adjust the amount of denoise that we get. And that's where it gets a little tricky because you wanna make sure you have the proper amount. So what we wanna do is we wanna strike a balance between keeping as much sharpness as possible, but eliminating as much noise as possible. And usually the way I do this, especially with a simpler image like this, is I'll start here and I'll just kinda of work down and see where the image 
is getting to the point where the animal itself, I'm looking at the subject with this stuff. The first thing I do is I look at the subject. Don't be tempted to look at the background. Look at the subject and enhance based on the subject. Because in the next video, I have another trick for the background. So even if you don't get the background perfect, we can actually still take care of that. And I'll show you how to do that again in the next video in the more advanced one. But for right now, what we're gonna do is try to strike a balance. So I'm looking at this and 22 looks okay. I'm gonna go up a little higher. I wanna clean up that noise and get a nice balance between sharpness and noise. So now I'm gonna go over here and just over to this background and see if I like what I see there. If that level of noise seems acceptable. So we're at 35 now, just kind of make a note of that. I'm gonna bring this down. This is what it was at and this is where it is. So I think that is decent. I don't mind a little bit of texture back there, a little bit of noise. It doesn't have to be like super smooth like that. Sometimes when it's super smooth like that, sometimes you can actually get some posterization happening between gradients. So I'm a little bit careful about that, but I could be more inclined to be more like a 40s, 50s, something like that rather than 35. But still, this is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go down and look at the eye again and kind of say, okay, well, I know where I like this. That's at 38. What does this look like at 46 or 50? See, I think 50 is starting to soften this area up too much. So I'm gonna bring this back down and basically what you're doing here is you're trying to come up with a compromise between the sharpness that you see here and how well it's denoising the background. Also keeping in mind, we can adjust our sharpness after this is all done. You almost always have to add a little sharpness when you've denoised a photo. So you gotta keep that in the back of your head too. And keep in mind, you can also, you know, we'll have our masking in place too. So it's not gonna sharpen this background area here. So get this to the point where you kind of like it and kind of come up with a nice compromise. I think 43-ish, probably those low to mid 40s is looking pretty good. And that seems like we have a good amount of sharpness right here. So once I'm happy with what I'm seeing here, and again, this number is gonna vary by image. No two images are gonna be exactly the same every time, just not how it works. But in this case, this looks pretty darn good. We want to have a couple more things here. We have estimated time. It's going to take about 25 seconds, it says, to process this image. And we have another option here called Create Stack. And I'll show you what the stack is in just a moment as well. Once we enhance it, it's going to put this new DNG file, it's going to group it with our original file so they're easy to keep track of. And as a side note, you can see why now it's important to do your masking and have a little bit of sharpening in there so you can kind of gauge how this is going when you're trying to adjust this amount. Had we had a sharper background here, had we skipped that masking step, and had we had a sharper background here, we would have had to probably use maybe 50 or 60 points of denoise to get the same effect we're getting down here in the low 40s. And the same with the eye. If we would have taken sharpness completely out, this would have looked like it got worse a lot earlier than it actually did. So in my opinion, it's a little bit easier to have a little bit of sharpening in there and a little bit of masking in there so you can see what the balance of the final image is gonna be. Now, everybody has different you know, opinions and workflows of how this works. So if my system doesn't work great for you, you can always try it without any sharpening and see if that works better. But for me, I find that this works really, really well. Let's go ahead and click the Enhance button and I'll fast forward for you. So if you look down here, we can see we now have our stack. There are two images here as indicated by the number two on the little label. If we click that label, it'll expand. One of two is the enhanced noise reduced DNG, as you can see here with the file name. But if we click the other one, we can still see our original ARW, our original raw file is intact. It's right there. So this is just a duplicate of it with noise reduction applied. Now, if you want to recollapse this stack, just click this label again and it'll recollapse. And I can click it one more time to open it back up. And once again, I'm gonna click the noise reduced version here. So let's take a look, let's zoom into this one here and you can see nice and noise reduced. Very little noise, very little grain in the background and the eyes, everything looks pretty good. I think we did a decent job here. And we can go ahead and if we feel like this needs a little more sharpening, we can now use these other sharpening controls. We can just increase this just a little bit, add a little bit there if we want to. We can adjust our radius, which is how far the sharpening goes out from the individual pixels. We can increase our detail if we want. Just tweak these until you're happy with what you see here. Now, one thing I would encourage you though, is to not overdo it with this final sharpening step because we have such a thing as output sharpening. For me, this is kind of just raw pre-sharpening. This is the raw file. I want it to be sharp, but I don't need it to be ready for screen, ready for print, anything like that. If you over sharpen on this step, 
it can hurt you when you go to output the image. The image might look really crunchy or look overly sharpened. So keep your sharpening to a reasonable amount here. In fact, I'd almost be tempted to pull this back just a little bit because it looks like it might be kind of pushing that boundary there. This will sharpen up with any kind of output that I do. And also let's do a quick comparison side by side so we can see our final results. So here is the one on the left that we enhanced and here is the noisy one on the right. So looks pretty good. If we look at the background here, big difference here, big difference here. It did a fantastic job. In this video, we're going to look at what to do with an even noisier image than the last one. Now, in the last video, we had a moderately noisy subject, and that technique works really well that you saw. We can usually balance out the denoise for the subject and the background pretty well if the noise is low to moderate. However, once you start getting into higher ISOs, it becomes more of a challenge. And I have a technique I use that works really, really well to kind of combat that because the problem is when you get into something like 12,800 or even 6,400, sometimes you find that you can't strike that balance and you're either gonna be over denoising the subject or under denoising the background by too much either direction. So let's take a look at how to handle that situation. So the first thing is we need to have the right kind of subject. Again, as we had talked about before, we need a subject that's relatively sharp and we can see we're pretty good here. We have some nice detail in the feathers. We see the little bumps around the skin here. Again, it's very noisy, but that's because it was at 12,800, as you can see right here. Now, if we go to the crop tool, you'll see that I did not do a lot of cropping here. Again, if I'm dealing with higher ISO images, I don't want to do a lot of cropping. This is about as far as I'd really want to go. So just to kind of reiterate what we've talked about before, had this bird required me to crop down to say this little square right here, the noise would have overwhelmed the detail. It's a physics problem as much as anything else. We just can't fix that kind of a situation because the noise is going to overwhelm the detail to the point that we just can't recover the detail. We're not going to see it no matter how good our software. But in this case, we have everything going for us. Our subject is filling the frame adequately and he's nice and sharp. So it's a good candidate for denoising. So let's start by going to the sharpening panel and we're gonna use our little masking slider here. I'm gonna hold the Option or Alt key down. I'm gonna just kind of drag that. And what I'm looking at here is mostly the head and the eye area. I'm not concerned about the rest of the bird, but I'm trying to strike a balance between keeping as much white as I can on that face and eye area while making the background as dark as possible. And honestly, right here, it looks like it's gonna probably be in this ballpark around 40, 42. Let's zoom in here a little bit. And we can play with this a little bit. And I'm not sure, I'm looking at very subtle detail here. And I'm just dragging this to see when I'm starting to actually perceive a loss of sharpness. And it actually looks like it's maybe slightly higher than that, 46 or so, but still pretty darn close using either method. So. Unfortunately, I can't mask this off too much more without taking away some of the sharpness in his feathers and around his eye, and I don't want to do that because I want that as a gauge when I'm denoising. So we're going to leave this right there. And just as a quick reference, so take a look at the background here. This is with masking in there, and I'm going to double click it to reset it, and you can see the noise is much sharper at zero than it is when I have it up at our value of 45, 46 here. So our next step is to denoise this. Let's go ahead and click the button. And I'm gonna go over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag our slider around. And what I want is to make sure I'm preserving as much detail in these fine feathers as I possibly can and keeping the eye as sharp as I can. If I go down here, I'm getting lots of detail, but I'm not getting any denoise. So I'm going to start slowly coming up and I'm just looking at the detail in these feathers right here, these real fine ones and I'm trying to keep as much as I can. And this is a little bit of a challenge because again, this was a very noisy image to start with, but this looks pretty good here. If I get much beyond 30, it looks like it starts to lose it. Now, if you'll notice, there is still a little bit of noise in here, and that's totally okay. It's not a big deal if you have some noise in there. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure you're preserving the detail. A little bit of noise is actually gonna make it look just slightly sharper sometimes, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. Obviously, we don't want a lot of noise on our subject, but we definitely wanna do what we can to preserve that detail and get rid of some of the noise. So this is a bit of a compromise here. I'm gonna maybe go just a hair bit higher there, maybe 33, 34, maybe I can get away with. Just looking at that eye, yeah, I think that's probably about it. Now, if I go over here to the background and take a look at that, that doesn't look terrible, but 
honestly, it is still pretty noisy, but we're gonna be able to take care of that in another step. I'm also going to zoom out and just take a look at what the back of my bird looks like. It's a little bit noisy too. Not terrible, but not great. But again, I don't wanna lose the detail that I have here, so I'm probably gonna leave this alone and click Enhance. And once this is done running, I'll show you how we fix the rest of it. Okay, so here is our newly enhanced, newly denoised DNG. Let's zoom in and we can take a look and see how our detail is looking here. And again, if we're looking at this and we're like, you know, maybe we could sharpen this a little more, see if we can bring out just a little bit more detail. Yep, definitely can. Not too much, didn't need much, but that's really, really nicely detailed there. We're still slightly noisy in the background, so we're going to take care of that. But for right now, this looks pretty darn good. And as a side note, I know that sometimes people are tempted with the denoise tool to crank it up and get all the noise out of everything all at once and then come back and try to use this sharpening step to bring back whatever detail they can. But the problem is sometimes that denoise can actually eliminate, kind of blur out, smooth out detail and you can't sharpen it back in. And when that happens, you get kind of a plasticky look to your animal. And we want people to look at our bird and say, hey, that bird looks like it was from Costa Rica, not from Mattel. So we want to keep that plasticky look out, and this is the best way to go about that. So going back to our bird, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and click the mask button. So we're going to click background in this case. And what this is going to do is it's going to select the background. I also got a little bit of his tail here, I guess all of the tail here. But everything you see in red here is going to take the effects that we do with these sliders that you see here in this column. And anything without red, such as his body and his head and his beak, don't count that red, that's not the same red. But anything that doesn't have red on it is not going to be affected by any of the changes we make. So no worries there. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. I'm going to press my space bar and give my mouse button a click, and that will allow me to zoom in in mask mode. If I need to move around, I just hold my space bar down, press my left mouse button down, and just drag around. Very, very easy. What I want to do is kind of get over here where we have some noise. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down. And again, everything you see in red is going to be affected by what we do. And what we're going to do is take a look at some of the sliders over here. Now, the first thing that seems the most obvious, we have a noise slider, which is designed to reduce noise. So we can just push that slider to the right and watch what happens to our noise. The noise magically, sort of, kind of, disappears. Not as well as I'd like it to, but it does disappear. And holding the space bar down and dragging here. And as you can see, it's much, much better than it was. So if I double click that to reset it, you can see how noisy it was there versus this. So there's a big difference right there. However, there are other ways we can handle this that can give us even better results. So the first one is we can use the texture slider. If I grab the texture slider and drag it to the left, most of the time we push this to the right to add more texture, but we're going to drag it to the left and that will reduce texture and smooth things out. Now you do have to be a little bit careful with this because sometimes if you get towards the end here, you can get some weird haloing sometimes, but for the most part, this looks pretty good. So I'm going to just kind of drag that over almost all the way to the end there. I think that looks great, but look at the difference in noise right now. I mean, that is really, really smooth. We can also sometimes use clarity, but it does sometimes halo. So in this case, if I put some negative clarity and you can see the beak gets a lot of haloing and you can even see it around his head a little bit. So clarity is not working on this one. So, so that's something you might want to keep in your back pocket. Sometimes you can use a little bit of clarity to kind of help with this, but in a lot of cases, this is what happens. You get that haloing. So be very careful with it. The other one that we can mess with here is sharpness. We can actually knock down the sharpness in this background. So if I drag this over, I can kind of clean that up even a little bit more. And of course, then I can push in a little bit of noise reduction, kind of balance these two. But look at that background, completely clean. It looks great. I'm going to zoom out and let's go down to 100%. Just kind of a more of a normal view and look at how nice that looks. Now we do still have a problem though, don't we? If you recall, let's go back to 200. If you recall, his back Still looked a little bit noisy. That's why I didn't mind losing that tail there. But look how noisy that looks. So we need to add the effect that we just did over here to his back. And thankfully with masking, that's actually really easy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to click Show Overlay so you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to click in this blank space right here. And we have an option for Add or Subtract. So what we want to do in this case is add to the selection because we want to take the changes that we made and apply to the background. 
we want those applied to his back as well. So what we're gonna do is click Add, and then we're gonna select Brush from the little menu there. And we're just gonna kind of brush in, and I have Show Overlay Check so you can see this. And we're just kind of brush this in. And we're gonna be very careful that we don't, I'm using a nice large brush here, and I'm gonna be very careful that I don't come up here too much, but I wanna have a nice feathering there, if you'll pardon the pun, it's feathering for a bird. But I wanna have some nice feathering there so it's a gradual transition from where we've done all of our noise reduction to the sharper areas. So let's turn the overlay off and zoom in and make sure it looks okay. And as you can see, that looks pretty darn good. I'm gonna maybe do just a little tiny bit more there in some of these areas. And you can check it over. That looks pretty good. And let's zoom back out. So now his back has had additional noise reduction applied to it as well as the rest of this. And it's nice and smooth. It doesn't get any weird patterns in it like it can if you're just putting noise reduction in by itself. By dropping texture and sharpness and then using noise reduction in addition to that, you can get these nice smooth backgrounds. Now, let's do one final step and kind of compare how this looks compared to our original. Quite a difference, right? Look at how noisy that original was. And again, keep in mind, this was 12,800 we're looking at. This wasn't something like 1,600. But if you look at the shot on the right here, the one we've been working on, you could almost swear that that was shot at more like ISO 400 or 100 or something like that compared to this. And we started off at 12,800. And we've been able to keep a very nice level of detail in all of those feathers. And again, we can go into 200% here and take an even closer look and we still retained a lot of detail. And we can actually sharpen this a little bit more if we want to try to pull some more of that detail out and it would definitely come back. In fact, let's go ahead and do that just so I can kind of demonstrate that for you. Gonna go back to the develop module and we're gonna scroll back down to sharpening and I'm just gonna push a little more sharpening in there. There we go. That looks pretty darn good. I'm gonna hold the option key down, look at the mask again. There we go, that looks pretty good because now that we've smoothed that background out, we're not getting any, that background's very black. And the reason we were not getting that nice dark black background before was there's so much noise and Lightroom was seeing so much detail there. So again, this is kind of a balance because as we push in more sharpening, we're picking that grain back up there, picking that noise back up over there. But we can push a little bit more sharpening in there and we can get some real nice detail. And uh, we end up with a really nice compromise. So those are the basics. I think this works out really well for most high ISO images, and this is how I typically do it. And it's very, very quick. I know we go through a video and it feels like it takes forever, but it is very, very quick to do it when you're just doing it, not going step by step like this. And in addition, we can also do things like we could drop the opacity of our brush as we're brushing the back if we want to have a kind of a compromise between what we did with the background and what we're doing with his back. Or we could come up with a secondary mask where we're just focusing on his back. There's all these different things you can do. But I think this probably gives you a general idea. And 90% of the time, this is all you need to do if you have a high ISO shot to make it look great. So that wraps it up. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, make sure you drop a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow along. I'd really, really appreciate it. And if you enjoy educational materials and you want to get the most from your photography, make sure you check out the educational materials at my site. Lots of ebooks and video workshops that will absolutely bring your wildlife photography to the next level. As always, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Have a great day.